What is good guys, it's Ray J back with another video. In this one, I want to break down what's going on with Tesla Spy, Nvidia, the QQQ, and a couple of other tickers. I'm going to break down what's going on with the market thus far, what you should be watching for as time goes on. In the pre-market, I'm going to go over some important data and what's happening with the news affecting the markets. But before I break anything down what's going on with the market right now, before I talk about Spy, Tesla, Nvidia, and all these other tickers, let me just mention a couple of things. Firstly, I am not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Mumu link, which is down below and in the description. If you sign up for Mumu with the link down below and deposit $100 into the account, you are guaranteed up to 5 free stocks. If you deposit $1,000, you're guaranteed up to 15 free stocks. And this offer ends very soon. Anyways, looking at SPY, this thing's in a very critical state right now. This thing's hovering around the 470 area, trying to hold up. Now, I saw a lot of dips this morning, not to mention crypto and uh, many other equities. But what's very, very important is with the market dipping like this, we're going to be watching for a big reaction once all of our data comes out. But so far, I do still want to note that the charts are looking in favor of the bears. The bears do have the edge so far. I even called that out yesterday, and so far it's panning out very nicely. But we're going to be watching what the reaction is before we continue to remain even more bearish. I still think the bears have the edge, of course, but don't forget that sometimes with all this data, things could still take small turns. So I just want to warn you that at 10 o'clock a.m., 30 minutes after the market opens, we have the ISM manufacturing PMI, the job openings data coming out, job quits, and more manufacturing numbers. These are going to be very important. We'll see if this causes any volatility, if the market turns, if the market tries to jump or not. Uh, we'll be watching for that very, very carefully. Job openings are going to be the most important things. We want this to be between 8.75 to 8.85 million, and we'll see if it's any higher or lower. This is going to make a lot of headlines, so watch for volatility. 30 minutes after market open. And then we also have the FOMC minutes coming out at 2 o'clock p.m. later on today. That's definitely going to cause some high volatility, in my opinion. I'm going to be watching to see if this causes the market to reverse and start pushing upwards, or if this causes the market to sink even lower to much lower levels. So watch for volatility for these moves. Uh, when it comes to other pieces of news affecting the markets, Barkin from the Fed was giving a speech. He said that he sees a soft landing ahead, but don't forget, guys, he still knows that rate hikes are a real possibility. He just spoke this morning. When it comes to other pieces of news affecting the markets, we have a new year and the market is trying to actually change again. We're starting to see yields going up just a little bit, a minor reversal from previous trends, and we'll see how things go. Look at Apple. They uh, Apple shares basically dragged the market down as it felt quite a bit and we're actually seeing lackluster demand for the iphone 15 in china especially because of geopolitical issues all of that ended up getting in the way uh there's a lot of things going on on the red sea right now this is actually leading to more uh, militants getting involved so it's very important it's going to affect supply chains just be very careful we also saw bitcoin uh pushing and pushing and pushing we actually saw this thing drop quite a bit this morning we'll be watching that very carefully on the side and that's pretty much it for the time being uh when it comes to major pieces of news affecting this market now let's break down some shards so as a reminder all this data that's coming out 30 minutes after market open you know at 10 a.m we have the, all this jobs numbers and manufacturing numbers and at 2 p.m we have the fomc minutes that's going to cause some volatility so watch for some nuances in the price action but i just want to break down what the charts are suggesting is likely going to happen as well and so far the charts do look bearish to me we're looking bearish spy looks like it could break down lower if you look at the four hour time frame, we're just trying to break base at this 470 area we're going to be watching a big test. Does SPY end up losing 470? If you lose it, I think we're going to see this thing come all the way down towards 468. Uh, one target to be watching for it beyond the daily time frame. I think that there's a very good chance, you know, if we lose 470, we're going to come down to 467 towards the daily 20 EMA. I think we're going to be testing this. Could get closer to 468 by today if this does trend a little bit upwards. But 468 to 467 should be coming if we keep breaking below 470. I'm going to be watching if that breaks as well. So we have two supports coming up. Watch that very carefully. Uh, in my opinion, make sure you watch 470 support, 468 and 467. For resistance, watch 471.64, 472, and then 474. There's a very good chance this is going to continue to drop, and we, we might start testing these lows down here. So I do favor that from a technical standpoint. I think it's very probable, but just to be safe, guys, don't forget about the volatility to watch for at the times in which the data comes out that I called out. Uh, but I still lean bearish based off the charts. 
on the QQQ. This didn't end up getting a little bounce before it dropped. It actually is dropping from here all the way straight down to 399. So the thing about the QQQ is we're actually at the support right here. This is the support I called out, 399.64. We're going to be watching to see if the QQQ could break back up a 402. If we break 402, then, you know, 404 is a possibility. If we lose 399, we could be coming down to 398 and then 396.5. Uh, in my opinion, we're still looking bearish. I mean, it's, it's still continuing to fail. It didn't even make it back to this yellow trend line. It's still failing. So we're going to be watching this very carefully. Now, from a technical standpoint, it is looking bearish. Uh, you know, it didn't even come back to back to this yellow trend line. Now it could like attempt to do this over the next few days, and but it would barely get to 402 if it does before it just comes lower. So it is looking bearish. I wouldn't be surprised if we see it continue to fall. On the QQQ, the daily is showing us that it's just fighting this support right here, trying to hold support at 401. If we lose this, we could easily see this thing start sinking into this 396 area 398 then 396.5 it looks bearish on the daily so watch that very carefully and we'll see how it goes uh that's it for spy in the qqq what about for tesla tesla's in a critical place right now too a lot of charts are in some critical supports so i called out 244 yesterday i said to watch that very carefully we had this range we had this 250 as resistance 244 as support tesla's testing the lower support right now it's barely holding on this is significant because on the four hour time frame tesla's 200 ema is our support we're barely holding on to this if we lose it ends specifically at 243.87 if we lose that basically close to 244 uh, you know, Tesla could start sinking to much lower levels into the lower 240s. We could see a bigger drop on Tesla if we lose this support. So I actually have it marked right here with this yellow line. It's very close to that 244 area. If we lose this support down here, Tesla's going to come down to 240. If we try to rebound, we could back to 247 and 250. But for now, Tesla's just barely holding on. So watch its reaction after the data comes out and see if we lose 244. If we lose it, anticipate some downside. Uh, for other tickers out there, we have NVIDIA and then Apple. NVIDIA, in my opinion, is looking very, very interesting. A little bit weak. We actually saw this, you know, bearish break to the downside. I was calling, I was talking about this yesterday. We had this pennant forming. Now we got another flag that led to the, you know, another break to the downside. Uh, NVIDIA could, you know, back test. We're, we're looking at resistance at 476, 479. 482 and 485, then support's going to be at 471, 468, and 464, and 462. So if it hits this 476 area, watch for volatility as the day goes on. Uh, but overall, it's looking weak as it's continuing to break down. When we zoom out of this, you can see how this thing's been moving. You can even just look at it like this. Uh, to me, this chart looks bearish. We actually had this flag, this rising wedge forming, and we were getting a break to the downside. Maybe looking at some of these imbalances down here. Uh, in my opinion, we could easily see this thing hit 468 soon. So it is looking very bearish from a technical standpoint. And we'll just have to see if that continues, at least with the trend. I also want to add that for NVIDIA, let me just double check this for you guys. Uh, NVIDIA is still looking very weak. It's actually below the 200 EMA on the four hour time frame, which is why we have to switch to the daily. The daily support is going to be at the 50 EMA at 473 so it looks bearish right now could this thing push up for 484 to back this to 20 it could but then i could see 472.98 coming so nvidia is looking bearish overall guys from a technical standpoint uh, last but not least for apple the last one i'm going to talk about is apple stock apple in my opinion it's also looking quite bearish again um, if anything, we're going to be watching to see how it tries to hold above 180. If we lose that, the 200 EMA is coming. Apple looks like it might test 177 now because it's just barely holding on for dear life. So you know, look at this chart. It's just continuing to sink. It didn't even get like a little rebound before it continued to drop lower. Instead, it's just dropping straight down. Uh, watch resistance at 185, 180. 6 185.75 186.5 188 189 and 190 watch support at 184 183.11 182.5 and 181 and 180 so what do i see happening here i mean i i wouldn't be surprised if apple you know continues to chop around the 184s to 185s 
and then it ends up breaking down lower towards 182.5. It looks bearish to me. It's just barely holding on. It's trying to base a 184, but I don't know if that's going to last. And it looks kind of weak right now. So I still anticipate some downside. Still looks very weak. We'll see how it goes from there. So that being said, guys, most charts look bearish. We have some data coming out. So watch and see what this causes, if this causes like a little pop or not. And then uh, at 10 o'clock a.m., we have some manufacturing numbers. Then at 2 p.m., we have even more data with the FOMC minutes. All right, so watch the charts, guys. We'll see how things go. Right now, charts look very weak in the pre-market, and we'll just see how it goes from here. Thank you for listening. Have a great day. I'll see you guys very soon on the, on the next one. Thank you, and peace out.